welcome to the White House and I salute the Vice President, Mrs. Quayle, and Secretary Cheney, other members of our cabinet, and General Vono, and distinguished members of Congress who are with us today, and uh, former Congressman Joe Diagardi. I'm especially glad uh, Joe's with us here today. Today, Corporal Freddy Starris becomes the first black soldier honored with a Medal of Honor from World War I. He sought and helped achieve the triumph of, a, of right over wrong. He showed, as this year has proved again, that an inspired human heart can surmount bayonets and barbed wire. 73 years ago, the corporal first was recommended for a Medal of Honor, but his award was not acted upon. In 1987, then Congressman Joe Diogardi and uh, my friend, the late Mickey Leland, known to many here from Houston, discovered the Stowers case while conducting other research. And the Army took up the case. And last November, the secretaries of the Army and Defense recommended that Corporal Stowers receive the Medal of Honor. I heard his story, accepted their recommendation enthusiastically. Surrounded by veterans, Mount Vernon Mayor Ernie Davis and former Westchester Congressman Joe Diaguardi unveiling a new plaque to honor World War I African-American soldier Henry Johnson, a war hero who was denied the nation's highest honor, the Medal of Honor, because of his color. Out of the one and a half million African-Americans who served in World War I and World War II, not one of them was ever given the Medal of Honor. And that's a statistic that Joe Diaguardi just couldn't ignore. Since 1986, Diaguardi has taken on the military to posthumously deliver the Medal of Honor to those who have been denied for decades. He was made aware of the issue in 1986 by Dr. Leroy Ramsey, whose son was here to see his father's dream come true. And I'm so glad, being in politics, that there exists a person in the ilk of uh, Joe Diaguardi. And not only has he championed a cause, he did not give up. And in the darkest hours, I know he must have thought, how long um, will it take? But as they say in church, how long? Not long. And he deserves our gratitude. He deserves our standing ovation for this person, the congressman, coming here uh, to exalt uh, the proposition uh, that all men are created equal. So please, let's rise to our feet for our congressman, Joe Diaguardi. I just want to say how happy I am to be here with my friends and family and you, Mayor. You took the challenge, and thank you so much. We're here basically for Pearl Harbor, but in particular for Dory Miller. The reason for this backdrop, a year ago, the Navy announced it's building an aircraft carrier. It's going to cost a billion, five hundred billion dollars. It's going to be ready in five to ten years. They don't know yet. And it's going to be named after Dory Miller. The reason why it's important is that these other aircraft carriers have always had the names of presidents except one, Admiral Nimitz. And this is Dory Miller who wasn't even an enlisted man or an officer. I started this in Congress in 1987 with a wonderful African-American who was chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. His name was Mickey Leland. We got to work together because we found each other, and he said, Joe, I can't get the Republicans to work with me. I'm not a party type guy. I believe in issues. I believe in people and policy, and that's, you know, human rights is a big thing with me, so is the environment, and I did that as a congressman. I started this with Mickey because Mickey came up to me one day and said, you know, your president, Reagan, 
executive order is going to get rid of food stamps. Your district is like mine. I'm in Houston. Very rich people, very poor people. You're in Westchester. Very rich people, very poor people. You got to come with me. I got to go before the agricultural committee. I said, I'm going to do it. So when I came to him one time talking about a guy from New York, Albany, Henry Johnson, he says, I'll do it with you, Henry Johnson. We'll open up that statute, but you got to do it for Dory Miller. I said, who's Dory Miller? He says, that's my guy from Texas. I didn't know. A lot of people don't know how heroic this guy was. That's why we're here today. But in any case, I've been working on this 30 years in Congress. We started. Mickey Leland is a hero. He died two years later delivering food and medicine to the starving people of Ethiopia. The plane went down, okay? And I'm continuing this in his memory. I want to thank Mr. Diagardi for his passionate fight for Dory Miller and this important honor that's long overdue. Dory Miller represents more than just one person who committed a heroic act in a time of crisis. Dory Miller represents the best of what America is. Yes. America is being your brother and sister's keeper. Yes. America is standing up and fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. It's choosing love over hate. Dory Miller became a member of the United States Navy at a time when the Navy and this country thought of him as less than a man. Didn't keep him from serving. In fact, he received no training in the United States Navy. He could serve food and he could shine shoes. His uniform had plain buttons. He couldn't get the Navy insignia on his button because of his color. And yet when the time came, when his ship got attacked during the day when our borders were threatened, and not just our borders, the American way of life was threatened that day. On this day, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, Everything that we are and everything we stand for as a nation was attacked. Day of infamy. Day of infamy. And Dory Miller said, not on my watch. Dory Miller, who had no training, jumped up on a machine gun that he had no skills on and began firing at the enemy. And it doesn't matter how many planes or ships he was able to strike. What mattered was he stood up and he was his brother's keeper on that day. When they gave the final order to abandon ship, they all abandoned ship, but they didn't abandon one another. And Dory Miller, who swam almost 400 yards to, to safety, brought other men with him. Dory Miller and what Dory Miller represents should be recognized with the highest honor this country has to offer, which is the Medal of Honor. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Let me start by saying, as we've always said since 1776, freedom is not free. Let me say it again. Freedom is not free. It has never been free. It always has to be fought for. And this gentleman who we honor today, Mr. Miller, my brother, showed valor. Valor in the face of danger. Way beyond the call of duty. Way, way, way beyond. beyond the call of duty for what he did throughout the darkest days, what always brings Americans together is their sense of patriotism and their sense of history. No, it's not a perfect history, but it's our history. And Joe, your support and you picking up this cause uh, is outstanding. When I met Joe four years ago, he told me about what he was doing and I said, Joe, sign me up. So again, I salute you for what he's done, not only in Congress, but out of Congress, for this great cause. It is a war here on the war in the middle of it has not been properly recognized as a war in the 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 war I'm former Congressman Joe D'Aguardi, now an active citizen, doing uh, the work that I did in Congress with some nonprofit organizations that I set up. And I'm particularly grateful today to be here with the black community because I started something in Westchester County, in Mount Vernon, my district, for them. And that's what this is all about. So I continue this as a citizen, 30 years. We now have nine medals, 
and we're hoping to have the tenth one, and maybe now we're going to get it even faster because a lot of people now will learn about the heroism of this gentleman who was called a messman. Why? There were no really enlisted people. If you were an African American, you're in the kitchen and they served the officers. At the end of the war, World War II, they changed that.